Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, Stepping Up from QuickBooks with Advanced Reporting. I'm Bob Shago with Sage, and I thank you for choosing to spend time with us today. First, a bit of housekeeping. We'll send out a copy of the presentation and a recording of the webinar via email when we're done. And please take a few minutes to fill out the survey at the end of today's webinar. We appreciate your feedback, and this will help us improve these events. Our agenda today is this. First, we'll look at the types of reports that growing companies need. Then we'll look at signs that you've outgrown QuickBooks reporting. I'll share with you a real-life example of a QuickBooks user who moved to Sage Intact. I'll show you a demonstration of Sage Intact reporting. Then I'll share with you the benefits you can expect using Sage Intact for reporting. And lastly, we'll answer questions and let you know where you can find more information. Let's get started. At Sage Intact, we hear from our growth customers that they're hyper-focused on metrics. A lot of our customers are former QuickBooks users. QuickBooks might be a good option for some organizations, but there comes a time when you outgrow its reporting capabilities. If you're using QuickBooks today, you know it offers four basic reporting types. Transaction reports, list reports, summary reports, and detail reports. Its transaction reports include the basics such as balance sheet, P&L, and general ledger, and accounts receivable and payable summaries. Lists include a chart of accounts, products and services, customers and suppliers. Depending on which version of QuickBooks you're using, there are something like 20 to 60 different types of reports available. That said, we hear from QuickBooks users that they spend a lot of time exporting data out of QuickBooks to create the reports they need. Recently, CFO Dive conducted an independent survey of 164 current QuickBooks users, and three out of four said they were frustrated with QuickBooks. They needed to use spreadsheets to get the reporting needed to do their daily work. So even though QuickBooks boasts of a variety of reports, these aren't getting the job done. Real-time reporting is a growing requirement as the pace of business quickens and moves online. Monthly or quarterly reports are no longer sufficient. Executives need access to up-to-date information about such metrics as inventory levels, sales patterns, and factors that drive spikes in purchases. This growing urgency was clear among the more than 75% of financial professionals who, in a recent CIO survey, said their leadership requests real-time financial information outside of normal reporting periods, which QuickBooks does not easily accommodate. Manual reporting and spreadsheets can be sustainable for a while, but a reporting solution that doesn't grow with your needs can stunt your ability to make quick decisions and the best strategic choices for your organization. What are the downsides of limited reporting? Consider the impact of poor visibility into costs, profit, and loss. This can result in decreased market share and missed revenue and growth opportunities as you don't have the information you need to grow and react to market changes and opportunities. Lacking real-time data, you'll make less informed decisions. You could lose your competitive position and end up with dissatisfied customers. Your colleagues will lose their confidence in your senior leadership. Poor decisions can mean the difference between business growth or failure. Is it worth it? A better reporting solution gives you more insight and visibility into your data and gives you the tools to make better decisions with improved strategic planning. You'll have what you need to optimize margins and pricing and to increase time to market with better market fit. The right information at the right time can help you increase both shareholder value and market share. For example, one of our users, a family-owned real estate investment firm, monitors assets under management, internal rate of return, cash on cash, notes payable, and net income period to date, which aren't available in QuickBooks unless you're using spreadsheets. Your key metrics might include these and others, both financial and operational, that help business leaders track the health of your organization. Other metrics might include budget versus plan, current consolidated cash, day sales outstanding, gap adjustments, and revenue per employee. Now, if you're a QuickBooks user, I'm sure you're listening to me and thinking, there's no way I can do that. That's a lot of spreadsheets, and you're right. But here's the thing. The most valued finance leaders are data-driven, so they can help map out the direction of their organization based on the opportunities or issues that the data uncovers. As a QuickBooks user, chances are you provide information to the rest of the management team as requested or on an ad hoc basis. What happens is that you and your team get inundated with requests. 
especially if the company is growing or looking at new strategies for growth. Today, your reporting requires a lot of manual processes, and that means your reporting takes days or sometimes weeks to complete. Your filtering in QuickBooks is limited to the chart of accounts and class, so you're exporting a lot of data to spreadsheets so you can analyze the information. These spreadsheets are error prone, especially when doing consolidations and eliminations, and you have no visibility into the company's future cash position. Here's another example of where QuickBooks reporting falls short. Nearly all companies have fixed assets, and those may include property, plant, and equipment. Some versions of QuickBooks Desktop have a fixed asset manager, while QuickBooks Online does not. If you're using QuickBooks Online or have multiple entities, chances are you're using spreadsheets to track PP and E. Consider the complexity of information, calculations, and schedules. Errors are almost guaranteed. Since the spreadsheets live outside of QuickBooks, creating assets, posting journal entries, and asset disposal are time-consuming manual processes. Another challenge with spreadsheets is the lack of a centralized asset register. Fixed asset data that lives in multiple systems, such as multiple QuickBooks instances, presents a lot of challenges. You can't track and report on crucial asset information such as condition and warranty status, and you open yourself up to risk with limited security, access to data and visibility into changes that are being made. Spreadsheets are also prone to containing stale data. With the volume of data generated and tracked throughout a fixed assets lifecycle, it's easy for things to get lost in the shuffle and hard to pinpoint the information you need to make informed decisions. Without current information, you're making decisions that could impact your bottom line based on old news. A better solution is unifying fixed asset management with your core financials. This eliminates duplicate data entry. By eliminating manual data entry into spreadsheets, this lets you generate the asset master as assets post to purchase, cash management, or accounts payable to account for every asset. Automatically calculate, track, and post depreciation to ensure accuracy and compliance. Post recurring journal entries and use predefined or self-configured methods to automate financial and tax depreciation and have flexibility and accuracy when disposing of assets with complete, partial, and mass disposal. A unified solution gives you increased control and reduces risk by providing easy access to critical information such as condition, warranty, service dates, and insurance status across all your locations with a central asset register. Securing data while providing role-based access and supporting cloud backups and disaster recovery automatically generating schedules when you change an asset's cost or useful life, and ensuring accuracy and accountability whenever changes are made with complete audit trails. Here's another area where QuickBooks reports fall short, consolidations. Consolidations are a routine part of many accounting departments. What's changing is the complexity and compressed timelines of consolidations. These are driven by factors such as the growth of subsidiaries across states, regions, and worldwide, the varying and changing nature of accounting rules in different jurisdictions, an emphasis on growing the business through organic new ventures and by acquiring others, increasing internal relationships and intercompany activities between equity within a control group, the international mix of business activities giving rise to translation of foreign currency transactions, balances, and operations. In a recent study of Financial Executives Research Foundation and Robert Half, 58% of companies manually reconcile accounts. Only 22% of companies in the U.S. use software to reconcile accounts. The traditional approach to consolidation blends accounting personnel, manual processes, and different technologies to bring data and information together in spreadsheets to form the basis for consolidation. This often results in a gap between the originating data and needed information. This gap inhibits transparency, limits insight, and creates a time lag between when business activities happen and when they get reported. Some accounting teams set up a consolidation entity in QuickBooks to separately house the consolidation and elimination journal entries, since there is no unified chart of accounts for multiple entities. Many others continue to rely on spreadsheets for this purpose. The consolidated accounts are manipulated to put them into financial reporting framework. 
This is often the beginning of the last mile of financial reporting. This multi-stage consolidation process is time-consuming and error-prone. No matter how well organized, communicated, and executed the process becomes. To preserve financial reporting integrity, checks and balances along with manually prepared account reconciliations using spreadsheet files and printouts are often assembled to prove the numbers. The intercompany activities and the investment of equity accounts get eliminated and the books are adjusted. Big problems arise when you post late entries or other adjustments and the process repeats and consolidated results are often unknown until the very end of the closed process. No one disputes that the old way of preparing consolidations no longer works. It's extremely inefficient and comes with greater risk. So for the data-hungry organization, it's obvious that QuickBooks can't give you the up-to-date information you need across an array of metrics and dimensions to make data-driven decisions. With QuickBooks, you lack the real-time visibility you need and other business leaders want to drive business strategy. Anchor Loans is an example of a company using QuickBooks that switched to Sage Intact. Anchor Loans is one of the largest fix and flip and new construction lenders in the U.S., providing real estate developers with financing to renovate or build residential and commercial properties. The company relied on an entry-level combination of QuickBooks and Excel, but that wasn't scaling as revenue and complexity increased. The finance team labored with time-consuming manual consolidations across 43 entities, each requiring its own QuickBooks instance. They ended up using a spreadsheet with 25 tabs, so they had no real-time insights to make faster, smarter decisions. In the words of the CFO at Anchor Loans, Brian Thompson, when you have many entities exporting financials from QuickBooks to Excel for consolidation was an ongoing nightmare. He talked with the CEO and said, if you want reliable, timely financial information, we can't do it in QuickBooks. It's too cumbersome and too manual. In order to deliver timely, accurate, and meaningful financial statements, we need to upgrade the accounting system. Upgrading to Sage Intact, Anchor eliminated around 16 hours a month of manual bank reconciliations that had been done in Excel. Plus, it made it easy for accountants to spot reconciliation discrepancies and drill down into details for resolution. Thompson's team saved another 16 hours a month by automatically calculating the cost of funds across seven financing vehicles. Integration with loan origination software eliminates another eight hours a month of manually entered organization data into QuickBooks, all while improving accuracy. Meanwhile, Anchor has markedly optimized the balance sheet reconciliation process from 12 business days a month to just three, a 75% improvement. Isn't this the place you wanna be? where finance gives the executive team what they want, when they need it, including accuracy and meaningful financial statements, helping to guide the business. So let's look at how we provide the visibility you need. In this demo environment, we've got a multi-entity company. This example company works with security systems, but it could be any kind of company, like services, software, healthcare, and so on. Let me point out some of the general items in this screen. First, I have four entities. This shows in some of the reporting that goes into the different locations. By going to this button that says top level, I'm at the top level right now. I can drop down into any of these companies from here. What you're seeing right now at the top level is the consolidated view of financials across all of these entities. I have a real-time view of assets, revenue, net income, and expenses with performance cards. I could create other performance cards like this. Each of these performance cards shows a summation of an account group. For example, in the case of asset, I've taken all the asset accounts and created a summary of these accounts for the current month. Underneath the summary, I can see a comparison of prior month, giving me a performance trend at a glance. I can see the assets have gone up. This is a good thing. Revenue and net income have also gone up. Also expenses, but that's not necessarily a great thing. But it isn't a worry if it stays in line with growth. I can also look at charts and graphs, like those on my dashboard. I can create additional charts and graphs and add them to the dashboard. My reports show amounts that I can drill down into right from the dashboard. I also have a component from our analytics tool, 
Interactive Visual Explorer with predictive capabilities. With Visual Explorer, you can analyze a trend or spot an opportunity while you still have time to do something about it. I'll show you how I navigate to each entity. I just drop down here and select the Texas entity. The system loads a new tab with the same dashboard and with the same performance cards, only now we're only looking at the metrics for the Texas entity. I have a question coming in. It says, can the people working in the other entity do accounting for that entity? That's a good question. To restate the question in terms of this example, if I'm working in Texas, can I do the accounting in Texas or does someone at the top level have to do that accounting? You can create users at the entity level like Texas. For example, people in the Texas office can log into just the Texas entity and do accounting for that entity. They wouldn't see any of the other entities or locations. And then at the top level, we can see everything rolled up. As I just showed you from the top level, I have four entities. Now I can break down or filter this information to take a deeper dive into the company's financials. Again, this is from the top level. I'm able to look across all the companies and across all the entities within the company and analyze information for all those entities. Here with assets, we're looking at a summary of accounts. You'll notice that it turns blue when I roll over it. I can click on that and drill down into all the accounts that make up the summary. I can further drill down on these accounts and see the transactions creating the account value. I can see all the general ledger journal entries and with just a few clicks, I get to source information behind the summaries. We can also roll over charts and drill down on reports. For instance, in this bar graph, as I roll over Texas, I see the amount behind the bar. I can also see the amount behind Maine, California, and Florida. The same with any of these charts. I can also expand any of these charts. These reports and charts aren't limited to a library of pre-built reports. Using built-in reporting tools, you can edit or create your own financial reports that slice and dice information from the general ledger. You can also create your own transactional reports that span related data tables using the Sage Intact Interactive Custom Report Writer. This example of an interactive report in the Report Writer is looking at live data to show me exactly what I'm getting as I build it. You can do advanced analysis, including trends and pivot tables, without making a trip to Excel. In addition to drill down and expansion, we have this concept of dimensions. The way I break down net income by location here is an illustration of dimensions. Each location is a dimension tracked in the system. Item is also a dimension, and this allows me to look at revenue by item. In fact, I could break down revenue by any available dimension. If this were a services company, I might choose to look at revenue per employee or revenue per project or that sort of thing. I have a question that came in. It asks, how many dimensions come with Sage Intact? Sage Intact has 11 predefined dimensions, which include location, department, customer, vendor, item, employee, and class, as well as industry specific dimensions like projects, tasks, contracts, and warehouse. Users can also define their own dimensions for things that drive their business. For example, if you run a printing company, you could track revenue and expenses by your different presses to determine the value that each press brings to the business. Nonprofit organizations often enable user-defined dimensions to track grants and funds. In addition to dimensions, another way we break down information is by statistical accounts. A statistical account keeps track of non-financial information like headcount or floor space or hours. In this case, we have revenue per retail hour by location. Revenue per retail hour shows a calculation using a statistical account called retail hours and financial accounts revenue. The retail hours statistical account collects retail hours in Texas, Maine, California, and Florida. And then I break down the revenue for each location by the number of retail hours for the location to get an amount that we see when we roll over, say, Texas. When we capture the operational information right inside the system, we're able to use it more robustly without turning to external spreadsheets. I have another question coming in. What if I have companies with different charts of accounts, like companies in countries with strict chart of account guidelines? 
So far, we've looked at a company where the entities share a single chart of accounts that continuously consolidate as, an, as the information rolls in. If you have entities with different charts of accounts or even different base currencies, Sage Intact Global Consolidation rolls them up to a single consolidated entity in a single currency for reporting across the organization. This can be done with a couple of clicks or even run on a schedule with an API request. It only takes a few seconds or minutes to run depending on the amount of data being consolidated. We have customers running global consolidations daily and some hourly during their end of period close. As we've discussed, data can keep your organization on the right path. Sage Intact provides built-in tools to display real-time data and you can drill down into any report or dashboard to the source. You can find all sorts of off-the-shelf reports in the Reporting Center. There are a lot more than 60. And we make it easy to create custom reports and dashboards. With Dimensions, you can build your own set of criteria and then mix and match the information. For example, sales order by location and customer. Visibility and security go hand in hand. That's why reporting comes with granular permissions, allowing an administrator to grant access only when and where it's needed. You can choose to allow access to everyone limit it to certain user groups, or give individual permissions to key people. As we wrap up, let me touch on the changing role of the finance executive, your role. Nearly every finance executive we've spoken with says their role has changed over the past few years. Today, more finance professionals are facing new demands to provide overall business counsel. And that's difficult to do if you can't look forward or back with clarity. Nearly all financial decision makers we speak with believe financial management technology can help business to discover new opportunities or risks. And 80% of our customers say they wish they had switched to Sage Intact sooner. So if you're using QuickBooks, I invite you to reach out to us and learn more about how we can help you bring more to the table. Now to some questions. Here's one. What are the dimensions for reporting? Well, there's several, including things like location, department, class, vendor, customer, employee, and item. You can also add user-defined dimensions such as facilities or channels. There are also some specialty dimensions available such as projects, warehouse, and contracts, and dependent dimensions like task and cost code and cost type. You can use dimensions to filter your financial data right on your dashboard. For example, dig into revenue accounts that are tagged to a specific line of business or a region with just a click. And you can easily add your own dimensions without ballooning the chart of accounts or the dimensions list. The number of dimensions is limitless. There are a few questions here about reporting and dashboards when managing multiple entities and charts of accounts. So this is one of the major differences you'll find using Sage Intact as compared to QuickBooks. If you're juggling multiple entities in QuickBooks, that's exactly what you're doing, juggling. So opening new instances every time you want to look at data, QuickBooks lacks any ability to centrally manage entities. Additionally, Sage Intact makes it easy to self-configure these new instances without bringing in additional help from IT. This eliminates hours of downtime across your multiple entities. In Sage Intact, all the data from the various entities is visible in a single instance. This gives you the real-time reporting instead of having to export data into spreadsheets to build reports. It's all available in Sage Intact for any level within your entity hierarchy. This means you can roll up the data and easily slice and dice it any way you want. And I should mention all the reporting, the dimensions and dashboards are available anytime, anywhere because it's browser-based. Of course, the access is secure. Compare this with building out complex spreadsheets and then putting these in a shared folder in your company. We make it much easier, and most importantly, the data is real time. So if you have multiple entities, Sage Intact is really an easy decision as compared with what you have to put up with in QuickBooks. I have a couple of questions here about cost. We know that out of the box, Sage Intact is more expensive as a solution to deploy than QuickBooks. If you're just looking at price tags, it's a simple plain truth. But if you're only focused on price, you're missing the mark. It's all about total cost of ownership and a return on investment. One example I'm familiar with is that of a U.S. company had about 75 employees making 10 million a year across three entities. With Sage Intact, this company trimmed a day per month in audit expenses for monthly close 
at an hourly rate of $200 an hour. The company is saving just under $20,000 a year. You add in automation that boosts accounts receivable and tightens up revenue leakage, their cash flow improved by half a million dollars. Those are direct results compared with what they saw using QuickBooks. We have hundreds of examples like this. As compared with any version of QuickBooks, when you consider lost opportunity, total cost of ownership using Sage Intact is much, much less. More important is the visibility you need to share with other leaders in the business to make data-driven decisions. Last point on this, Forrester released a total economic impact study looking at Sage Intact. They found a 441% return on investment over three years. If you want a copy of the complete report, let us know. Here's a question about using other business applications for reporting. Um, sure, you can do that. For example, you could look at all sales orders in Salesforce, but why not pull that data into Sage Intact so you have a consolidated view? I know that application in integration isn't something that QuickBooks does well, so you're relying on reporting outside of QuickBooks to see what's going on. But why not get a real-time holistic view of your financials in one place? It'll make life much easier. Well, this is all the time I have for today. I want to thank you for joining us. You can learn more about Sage Intact by visiting us at sageintact.com. Also look for more webinars as we dig deeper into some of the ways companies and organizations are outgrowing QuickBooks. Thanks again.